Hey, it's Bluebird. I'm a Canadian distiller, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going back to Mad Lab, where I'll be introducing their no copper distillation setup. The owner took a very long time to patiently explain to me their whole distilling process, and I'm very excited to share it with you too. So, let's go! Today we're here at Mad Lab Distillery where we'll be looking at their zero copper distillation setup. It's a pretty complicated process here and so Scott, the owner, had to explain it to me a few times until I finally understood it all. We have the wash that's finished fermenting in the IBCs here. 1000 liters of wash will be moved to the pot of the still here. We'll turn the heat on and it will take three to four hours from the time the heat was turned on to when we can start collecting distillate, which is a pretty long time to wait actually. The actual collection of the distillate will be five to seven hours long. Now usually when we're doing batch distillations, we'll first do a stripping run distillation and then we'll do a second spirit distillation where we'll start to make cuts to the spirit based on flavor. And so at that time, we'll separate the distillate into heads, hearts, and tails. The interesting thing here at Mad Lab is that not only do they make cuts during their spirit distillation, but they also make cuts during their stripping run distillation as well. Right now, we're doing the stripping run distillation. So anything that comes off before the still reaches 80 degrees Celsius is considered four shots here and discarded. Then we'll take two liters off the still as a heads cut. In this case, I'll refer to these different fractions as stripped heads, stripped hearts, and stripped tails to avoid confusion with the cuts we'll make later on in the spirit distillation. Okay, so next comes the stripped hearts, which is everything until 40% ABV. After that, anything below 40% ABV will be stripped tails. So after the first distillation, we already have our distillate, or our low wine, divided up into different cuts. However, only the stripped hearts we collected will go to our spirit distillation. The rest of the distillate is added to the next stripping run. During the second distillation, Scott will take 4 liters off as 4 shots, then 4 to 6 liters off as his heads fraction. After that, we start collecting our hearts and we'll collect that until we hit 60% ABV. Anything below that is considered tails, and the tails will be collected until 30% ABV. After which Scott says it's no longer worth it for them to continue running the distillation. So they'll just turn the still off at that point. Now they make a variety of spirits here. Raki, vodka, gin, and scotch style whiskey. So when they're collecting the hearts in the second distillation, anything collected above 80% ABV will go to make gin, raki, and vodka. The distillate collected will have to be further distilled to produce those different kinds of spirits. The hearts that are collected between 80% and 60% ABV will go into barrels to be matured into whiskey. This is a pretty complicated distillation process with a lot of different fractions collected. One of the reasons that it's complicated is because this still setup has a lot of limitations to it. Scott didn't have a lot of money when he started Mad Lab Distillery. So this still here is basically a bunch of things that he found and retrofitted together. Here we've got the pot where we load the wash into. There's the thumper keg in the middle which is left empty when the distillation runs, and then the condenser of the still. If you've ever visited a distillery, you'll find that most distilleries have beautiful, shiny copper stills. Not only is copper pretty to look at, but it's also known to help remove sulfurous compounds from the distillate to produce a cleaner tasting spirit. Copper is also extremely expensive, so purchasing a copper still was out of the question for Scott. 
The steel he has here is made of stainless steel. In order to get a similar level of sulfurous compound removal, Scott has devised the current production method for his spirits. Let's hear a little bit from Scott on his thoughts about copper. You don't have any copper in your still. We don't, yeah. That's, okay, that's gonna, that's, I'm, distillers are gonna fight me on this one. And this is something that I've kind of, that's a whole, that's a long, that's a long and, and sort of uh, debated topic in my opinion. But yeah, copper, copper is great. It's, it's beautiful. Um, I think that the, um, so the main idea, the main idea behind having copper in your still is that it's, it's going to leach sulfates. Uh, so it's going to improve the, the final quality of your product. Uh, my view on that is it may, uh, well it does, we know it does, uh, but I think just the, the surface area and the surface contact of having a copper still uh, is just not quite enough to really uh, make a massive difference, especially, you know, maybe, maybe if you're only doing one pass, uh, but we do at least two distillations on ours, so we, we tend to, you know, our final product, there's no sulfates in it, you know, it's clean, it's chemically pure. Um, that, uh, yeah, I think, um, it's one of those things that it's, it's, it's done that way because it's always been done that way. Um, and you know, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's, I, uh, you know, in a lot of ways I like doing things in a traditional way, so I totally understand that. But I, uh, I am of the opinion that the, the, uh, it's, it's, it's good to have copper, but it's not necessary. Uh, so yeah, so our, our, our still hundred percent stainless. Um, and we've not had any problems that I think a copper would, would have made any difference. But do you notice after the first pass that you get a rotten egg smell at all? Uh, no, not a rotten egg. Uh, you do get a little, on the first pass, you know, you get a little bit of sulfate smell, mm -hmm. um, just on the strip run. Uh, but by the time you get to the second run, it's not even, not a trace, not a trace. Um, I've, and I've even had other distillers, you know, that I've argued this exact topic with, try my spirit and be like, well, no, there's no sulfates in there at all. Like, you know, they've tasted it and said, yeah, it's clean, it's fine, it's, there's no problem. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 you can definitely make it a, a fantastic spirit without, without copper. Um, maybe copper will make it easier. Maybe it would make uh, my whole product's process a little bit easier. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're happy with what we're producing. Uh, we're happy with the output and uh, yeah, that's, that's my take on that. I'm sure it's controversial. I'm sure I'm gonna hear, I'm sure I'm gonna hear about it. I'm sure someone's gonna, uh, uh, argue with me on that and that's fine, uh, but I like to argue on that one. Thanks Scott. While visiting the distillery, I was intrigued by Scott's vodka making process. So I mentioned previously that anything collected above 80% ABV will be used for gin, vodka, or raki. So for the vodka, we'll take the spirit and it will be diluted to the correct percent ABV with water before it's slowly trickled into the corny keg that we have here. We have two corny kegs that are filled with activated charcoal. The spirit will slowly move through the activated charcoal in the first corny keg and be pushed into the second corny keg, which is also full of activated charcoal. Feel. But now I'm falling in love as you're falling asleep. After passing through the second corny keg, the vodka goes into a holding container where it will await bottling. It takes two to three hours to filter 50 liters of vodka, so this is a pretty slow process. The activated charcoal will help remove undesirable aromas and flavors from the vodka to create that pure and clean taste that vodka drinkers enjoy. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the no copper distillation setup they have at Mad Lab. In the meantime, please help this channel grow by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. Please hit the subscribe button for more distilling, brewing, and drinks videos. This is Brewbird, sending goodbye to your way. I'll see you next time.